If Georgia is the star of the show today, Congress is center stage tomorrow. Let's go to NBC News Capitol Hill correspondent Leanne Caldwell. Uh, Leanne, the Electoral College certification is usually a pretty standard half hour affair. Not tomorrow, though. Could you set up this marathon day for us? Definitely not tomorrow, Allison. So what usually happens is the vice president of the United States proceeds over, uh, 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 presides, excuse me, over a joint session of Congress. House member senators are in the House of Representatives floor, and they go through all the states alphabetical order to announce the name, the electors, and the numbers of votes cast for each candidate. Well, tomorrow we should expect, expect objections in up to six states from House Republicans. And if there is also a senator joining in that objection in any of those six states, well, then what happens? Then the House stays in the House, the Senate goes back to the Senate chamber, and they debate for up to two hours these objections, and then both bodies have to vote on it. Then they come back together again and go through, continue to go through the alphabet until every state is called and every state that has had an objection has been debated and voted on, Allison. It's going to be a long day, maybe two. <laughs> it sure sounds like it. Let's talk a little bit more specifically about those objections, Leanne. Georgia Senator Kelly Loeffler yeah. saying that she will likely join an objection uh, to the vote count in Georgia. Senators Ted Cruz, Mike Braun will join House Republicans uh, in forcing a debate and vote on an objection in Arizona. Where else will we likely see objections and who's leading the charge? So I touched on this briefly in the sense that House Republicans, they can object to as much as they want, but nothing goes anywhere until a senator joins that objection. As you mentioned, um, Georgia uh, and also um, Pennsylvania is another state that is expected to be objected to as well, Arizona. That's because they will have senators joining them. Um, but there is a group of up to 13 senators in the Senate who are saying that they will join these objections. So, so far, we have these three states. We're waiting to see if they're going to join in the other three states that House Republicans are expected to object to, Allison. So, Leanne, we keep saying that these objections will not change the outcome of the election, but can you just explain to our viewers why not so they're really clear on what is happening over the next day or two? Such a great question. Um, the reason is, is because after these objections are debated, they have to be voted on by the House and on the Senate. And the House, of course, is controlled by Democrats. Democrats are not going to agree to these objections. In the Senate, there's only up to 13 Republican senators who have uh, come out in some sort of support, perhaps, of these objections. So that is nowhere close to the 51 senators they need, a simple majority, to for these objections to move forward. So these, this is a process in futility. It's not going to go anywhere, but it is an effort of these Republicans to gain the favor of President Trump, Allison. Leanne, we also keep saying that it's not all Republicans. This is dividing the Republican Party yeah. into two camps. What are you hearing uh, from the GOP, uh, the GOP members who are against this election challenge? Yeah, well, the president calls these GOP members the Surrender Caucus. But I will say, Allison, that that Surrender Caucus is actually growing. The reason is, is because we've heard from more uh, Senate Republicans, even today, even Senate Republicans who are facing reelection in 2022, who are coming out against this, including Senator uh, Moran of Kansas, it's not a, a high profile name, someone we haven't heard a lot about, but he's from a conservative state. And he says that this is not the role of Congress to, to determine who the electors are and who the electors vote for. The only role of Congress is to count the electoral college vote. And so he is just one of more than 20 Republicans who have come out vocally and publicly to object to their colleagues. And that's amazing within itself, the fact that people feel that they have to put out a statement in opposition shows that this is a very tenuous time for the Republican Party, a party that is supposed to say that they are 100 percent for the Constitution and for states' rights. Well, some of their members are acting in the exact opposite way, saying that, uh, you know, these things are unconstitutional, Allison. 
So, Leanne, I think everyone wants to know just how much longer this can drag on. After tomorrow, do the Republicans have any other uh, mm -hmm. options to legally overturn the election? They, they don't. And some Republicans and most Democrats say even they don't have any role tomorrow either. But after tomorrow, yeah. Um, they, the options are dwindling, although, Allison, with this president, you just can't you can't mark anything off the book because there's still 14 days left until Inauguration Day. And who knows what is going to happen? But as far as changing the outcome of the election, chances are zero tomorrow and they're going to remain zero after tomorrow. Yeah, Leanne, but like you said, we just won't know until they are moving the furniture out of the White House. Just about anything is possible. So we'll see yeah. what the next couple of weeks look like. Uh, Leanne Caldwell uh, filling in what uh, all the details of what is going to be quite a day tomorrow on Capitol Hill. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.